Hey guys, the letter from the producer live part 75 has just aired and I'm here to give you all of the details on what's coming in patch 6.3 as quick as I can. And holy crap, this is actually really hard. I'm going to do my best to try and summarize this. There is a lot coming. The patch has been named God's Revel Lands Tremble and it will be officially launched on Tuesday, January 10th. I won't be going over it in this video, but the trailer has been posted in a variety of languages and I do recommend giving it a watch. As expected, there will be an expansion to the main story quest line. We're also going to be getting an expansion to the side quests, including Tataru's Grand Adventure Continues, which has a prerequisite where you have to complete the Four Lords Stormblood quest series, which the extreme trials from that time period are still to this day amazing fights. And then you also need to complete the patch 6.1 quest line, Small Business Big Dreams. Side quest tales of newfound adventure are also being expanded upon. If you're a relic hunter, you're going to be very excited for the next bit of news. The somehow further Hildebrand adventures are being expanded upon in patch 6.35. Alongside that, we're getting the relic weapon quest line expanded in 6.35 which is going to be very exciting for us and I really do hope everyone has been keeping up with their hunt trains for the Manderville meteorite. We're also going to be getting the Lopperitz Beast Tribe added which definitely has its own type of flavor for sure. This is wild. I think that these graphics are just awesome. Kind of curious to see what they're going to say. We're also going to be getting the dungeon the Lapis Manalis which you're going to be able to use zero during duty support with which I am 100% here for. I'm such a big fan of her. We're also going to be getting a brand new extreme trial and they haven't said any anything in the marketing at all and it's been kept a secret which made my ears perk up a ton because I'm like okay what are you gonna do here all they said though is there is a puzzle mechanic coming 6.2's extreme it was more fast-paced with Barbarisha but this will be very different so we'll have to see how that goes I really actually did love 6.2's tempo as a healer with patch 6.3 we are also going to be getting a brand new unreal trial being added which is going to be Sophia extreme which was by far one of the best extreme trials in Heaven's Ward I definitely recommend people to check it out we're also going to be getting the brand new Alliance Raid Euphrosign, which is going to be something that looks just stunning. When they were showing off footage, I'm like, oh shoot, is that Windows XP? I'm joking. But some of the armors they showed off, I really love the look of some of these sets. I think that this is just going to be absolutely amazing. It's After the last one, you know what, they had to have some great music and in the trailer, I'm just like, yeah, this is some amazing music. Definitely looking forward to this. Now for something that I have been looking forward to for far too long, we are getting the Omega Protocol Ultimate, which I'm calling top because I am stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna make the jokes here but it's gonna be coming two weeks after patch 6.3 and has the unlock requirement of completing the current raid tier so P8S as is standard with any ultimate best in slot it's gonna be mandatory so no surprises here on that they also joked saying that we will see the real hello world which all I have to say to that is oh no hello world is a very iconic mechanic from Stormblood for anyone who didn't do it all I can say is oh no they also showed a little bit of footage showing the first fight and it's definitely a smaller arena similar to how P5S is going to feel very comfy. Top is going to feel very comfy at least at the top. Let's <laughs> set the start at the top of the fight. One last thing they did say the direction and design of the fight is going to be intentionally different than DSR. They very intentionally made it a lot less difficult than DSR they didn't really want to make it harder than DSR which knowing people that got burned out on DSR which I still don't see them logging on I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to say I think that that's actually kind of healthy either way I'm going to be doing this ulti I am so excited for it and I'm actively recruiting looking for groups whatever like this is just a majorly big W for me seeing the Omega series this is perfect with this patch in patch 6.35, we are going to be getting the third deep dungeon to Final Fantasy XIV, which is going to be called Eureka Orthos. Unlock requirements are going to be to complete both the Endwalker MSQ and then to unlock at least floor 50 of Palace of the Dead, which for anyone who hasn't done Palace of the Dead before, this is really something that goes by pretty quickly, so I really wouldn't worry too much on it at all. This will be available for all jobs that you have at level 81 or higher. They did mention that bosses in this dungeon will feel a little bit more like bosses compared to older deep dungeons you will also unlock uh eureka overthrows from the npc that we already have in game ko rabatna and more drama unfortunately with the addition of ko, ko rabatna taking on these additional responsibilities the kind of quest lines that they have related to the aroma born like series will be removed but generally those items really aren't used that much these days i guess i'm kind of happy that they didn't just delete the npc that would have been sad they've been there for like 
so many years, it's been like almost 10 years or something. <laughs> well, entry and registration to go into Eureka Olerthos are quite literally following the same structure as the other two deep dungeons. Save two slots, uh, two different progressions, entry NPC, you can enter on your own, group, you have mini maps, what I'm just gonna keep calling pomanders, you have item effects, uh, you are gonna be going through the floors of enemies with the map blocked for vision, you eventually land at a boss, Aether Pool Armor and Aether Pool Arm are still going to be here. So if you're comfortable with Pass of the Dead and the mechanics already, you're going to probably feel pretty comfy here. Also, if you come from Warframe, you can basically go into your own Necromech in Eureka Orthos. Sorry, I had to say it. That's all I could think of when I saw it. There's going to be expanded duty support in Heaven's Ward Dungeons. Actually, a bunch of them, which will allow solo players a lot more flexibility in how they're going to be tackling content. Now we have it basically like from A Realm Reborn all the way through, I think. If we don't, we are extremely close. This is going to add a tons of Heaven's Wards dungeons, which is honestly always great and get more people into the game. You know what? I'm all here for it. In terms of the job adjustments, I have been by popular request asked to do a separate video. So if you want that, the link is going to be in the description and my pinned comment, but I'm not going to cover it here. Just people wanted it separate. So I'm like, you know what? Okay, we'll go for it. But if you wanted a very, very quick summary, Paladin looks freaking awesome like just amazing they are doing so many good things with this rework and there's going to be a set of pvp updates where series 3 is going to be beginning and season 5 of crystalline conflict is going to start alongside a brand new map for crystalline conflict the clockwork castle town is being added which for real is giving me squid game vibes all over the place i actually love this map so much they also showed some of the pvp rewards which includes this amazing summer glam which sorry i'm going to need this pretty much the first day i'm going to be grinding it hard and then this armor which I mean, it's a badass set of armor. What do you want me to say? It's amazing. We're also seeing a large amount of crafting and gathering updates. First of all, we're seeing the addition of the Endwalker tool enhancement quest for the Splendiferous tools. Splendiferous I almost said, oh my god. Which in patch 6.35, which to unlock, you need to complete Endwalker questline, the Crystalline Mean quest from Shadowbringers, and then have unlocked the Boutique of Splendors by speaking with Moen and Yulmore. So for sure, we're seeing a lot of Shadowbringers ties back here, which I live for. That expansion was amazing and then we're also going to be getting new custom deliveries from Andin. We're going to get some gathering UI updates including collectability values will be displayed for reference when gathering collectible items. We're also going to be seeing primary fishing locations, preferred bait, and other conditions like weather added to the fishing guide which is very very much something that I and many others have wanted for years. There will also be a brand new spear fishing location added to Upper Leno's Cha Cha. Island Sanctuary is also getting a ton of updates with brand new sanctuary ranks and visions, new item rewards, brand new materials, crops, animals, handicrafts, new structures, and improvements to the user interface such as being able to filter by multiple criteria at once, sort each category too. You can also view other factors like popularity and supply while shutting up the agenda. You can collect all of your yields from crops or leavings from animals at once which is huge for me clicking through each of them individually was a lot. There's a treasure hunt update where they're adding this shifting gymnasium agnon which is specifically for maps obtainable and usable in Alpis. They demoed a little bit of footage and it's like a wheel of fortune system that throws different trials at you which is a neat twist for sure the gold saucer is also getting a brand new course for leap of faith which is called the sylph step which honestly looks great i always thought that this was one of the prettiest areas in the game even though it's away from in like a realm reborn it's still great i look forward to looking at this housing is also getting an expansion which is fantastic news for so many people where additional wards are being added for all residential areas six regular and six subdivisions for a total of 1,800 new plots per world and they will be able to be purchased using the RNG placard system. However, Dynamis, Chaos, Light, and Materia data centers won't have this expansion because apparently there are more free houses there, which surprised me actually seeing this, but apparently they have a lot of available plots left over. Today I learned. I thought that everyone wanted it more, but I guess that's just us here. I love my houses. But there's going to be a detailed article coming soon on the lodestone that's going to break down things like how many free companies how many personal plots and as soon as i can get my grubby little hands on it i will be giving you that information asap now for huge ui updates we're going to be getting the damage type delta test to be shown physical magical unique which will help us understand when to use something like virus over faint for magical damage they're also adding the remaining time for buffs and debuffs in the party list which is a game changer for me as a barrier healer i've wanted this for so long they are also adding a new ui 
July theme for clear blue. Portraits will now be displayed using 2D Finder. Fashion accessories will get more stuff that you can do while using them. There's going to be an option that can let you use the umbrella automatically when raid is detected, which is going to be awesome. I'm probably going to switch that on. You can also cast glamour gear and dye it uh, for the retainers without removing it from the retainer. You can also cast glamours on your own equipment from your retainer's inventory. This is actually very huge for me. I won't linger on it, but I've been caught needing to escape out and of those menus and like reassign myself my glamour so many times over the years it's it's just big also adding a new filter for the sundry splendors vendors which is going to let you see the newest items first which will definitely help even me when it comes to hey what's new here because there are so many different menus there it's going to be a great qol improvement for sure like on to the new mounts which includes a golden mareep a golden harambe <laughs> Lopritz machines, a funky element, and more. We now have more housing items, which includes this funky one with a weird fence with different variations. I actually love the night picture. It reminds me of Spirited Away. That it's like an amazing movie. I just watched it a few months ago with my boyfriend. It's freaking amazing. They also have a built-in hot spring. It's just really cool to me. Housing items include this fantastic stained glass window, which is fantastic. Uh, I said that twice. It's really good. That stands out to me a lot. Also the pawn table and wire partition. Like these housing items, some of them are just like stand out beyond amazing. I'm actually going to do some very big changes to my house using the wire partition alone. That justifies it. It's just amazing. Now we're going to be ending this on the minions where there is a brand new corgi minion lapras ghost train and more we're going to be ending this video on the good news that the heavens turn event is returning on december 31st and is going to be featuring more items more fun stuff i'm really excited for it and with that we've reached the end of this video and i really hope that i was able to help you out and if you want to help support me in my content i would super appreciate if you dropped a cat daddy on that like button and dropped omega all of omega in all the different forms which there's far too many forums on that like button. Take care everyone, I hope you have a fantastic day.